fit your feet. No. Old people want comfort. Kids want omnipotence. You wear these, all your problems are solved. The emotion, the emotion. Well, speaking for myself personally, wearing these sneakers has solved all my problems. <laughs> but how do we show that? Look, we got four hours till dawn. Two hours to go home, change and shave, and we'll still have two hours before we present this to Dan. And we'll have the afternoon to look for new careers. He's frustrated. He's off his rhythm. And the other players aren't that hard to beat. In his mind, they turn into nuns, schoolgirls with uniforms. If he's having a really bad day. Then he remembers his Adidas. He puts them on during a timeout. And suddenly, he's up against gigantic guys. He's flying through the air. He's dunking shots. Then the tagline, Adidas. They give you that extra lift. What do you think? Basketball players turn into nuns. Oh, I know it's terrible. Forget it. We, we haven't slept. You do that with a dissolve? A dissolve, a cut, it's fantasy. We have Danny Manning, or maybe we have Danny Manning? Yes. Maybe. We'll know tomorrow. Yeah. The client is gonna want a specific shot that says comfort. Oh, Danny Manning puts on his Adidas, and then we see this incredible look of comfort flooding his face. No, there, right. Boom. obvious. I don't want to offend Catholics. The nuns are going to be treated with absolute respect. People are going to have great recall on this. Danny Manning Danny and the Manning. nuns. And the nuns. I don't like celebrity endorsements. How do I know he won't do something in his private life to hurt the product? Andy, this is a man of the utmost integrity. I recommend we go with him. How would the nun part work? Watch your face! Watch out! Now watch out! Come on! Here we go! Oh, yeah. Watch your face! Watch the face! Come on! Here we go! Oh, yeah! Here we go! Got it! Rebound, sister! Yes! Go again! Right away! Go! Back off! Little bit there! What did Thornell say exactly? He said the commercial is better than it was before. Those are his exact words? He said it's better now, yeah. Because if those were his exact words, we're fucked. He hates it. Is it? I don't think the client is happy. Okay, good rehearsal. Good rehearsal. I have this feeling he's putting us in review. Oh, yeah? This is a $20 million account. He is not putting us in review. Okay, I'm gonna show this tape to the guys at the meeting tomorrow. You're gonna see sheer terror on those faces. What is it? It's our next trip. Just came in from the Canadian Guide. Yeah, it looks great. It's great. The boat's bouncing all over the place. The guy nearly loses the camera. Thinking of shit. You don't want to ever go to, like, Kauai? Kauai? Oh, yeah, that's great. We could really test ourselves, negotiating our way through the lobby. Andy! Don't believe me, Andy. We'll take care of it. OK. Okay. We'll OK. OK. How we doing? OK. These two young guys work very hard on this. Do you think we have a problem? I know what it is. I feel like there's this big hole where Nick Karras used to be. Let me tell you something. Art Stefanoff and David Koenig are two of the brightest young guys we've got. Otherwise, I wouldn't have given him Nick's accounts. Nick was a friend. It wasn't easy for me to hear he was off my account. Andy, he, he retired. Yeah, I know. Andy, we miss Nick a lot. But he's moved on. And we have to move on, too. You know what I yeah, mean. Well, I think I understand all this pretty well, Jack. I mean, as I recall, Nick hired you, didn't he? Yes, he did. I seem to remember that. Andy, let me get you together with them, all right? These are very bright guys. Sure. And if you're not happy, and we'll work something out, okay? Is that fair? Nothing would make me happier. Nothing would make him happy. You know what that means? Review. Who you call? Nick Karras. I need some advice. Kill the nuns. Right. Kill the nuns. Just make him nervous. It's too far out. Playing ordinary basketball players, guys. And kill the schoolgirls, too. Anytime. Anytime. Hello? Yes, one second, please. Thornell, I love how retired you are. 
Hi, Andy. Yeah? No, no, I, I think you're right. Yeah, kill them. I mean, the main thing is the shoes. If you were selling nuns, it would be a different story. <laughs> it's all right. I'm glad to be of help, Andy. Okay, thank you. Thank you, all right, thank you ladies. Get a wonderful job, all right? Thank you. Thank you. Give you your I hope that appeases him. This is not a happy guy, Dan. He is not fucking dropping us. He's our client. He goes when I tell him he can. Let's put him on the list for the Canada trip. Do you think he'll go? Yeah, he'll go. You know what? Let's put Nick Karras on the list, too. You don't have a problem with Karras? No, I wouldn't have a problem with him. You invite Tornell. I'll call Karras. I can't wait to see those faces. This is where some of us are going next month. It's an hour's flight north of Vancouver. It's called the Chilco River. And this right here, that's known as the White Mile. Holy shit. When I got this job, I was charged with doubling our billings in four years. We did better than that. We went from 153 million to 400 million. And I had a great time doing it. This is fun for me. If you're not having fun, you shouldn't be here. You know what I'm hearing now? I'm starting to hear fear. Fear of losing your talent, losing your clients. What did he say? How did he say it? You start working from the fear of losing, you lose. This is not gonna happen, guys. Why do you think we take these trips? Anybody have any idea? Marty, why are we going on this trip? Well, uh, frankly, Dan, I think these trips are one of the best things you've done for this company. I mean, after we've slept out on the ground with them, and cooked the fish we've caught together, they're not just clients anymore, they're like family. Yeah, so in other words, it's a way of cementing relations. Yeah, well, that happens. What's it really about? You don't really know, do you? This trip is to get your balls back. The stakes are very high in this business. When they're this high, what do you, what do you think makes the difference? Hard work? Everybody works hard. No, you know who wins? The guy who can walk up to you in the schoolyard, look you right in the eye and say, I want your lunch. You gotta be able to go into the wilderness with nothing but a knife and a little nerve and come out not just having survived it, you come out owning it. You wanna keep this client? You take him by the throat and you hold him to your chest until you can feel his heart beating. And you say, you're mine, pal. From now on, you don't want what you want. You want what I want. That's what this trip is about. Jesus, this guy's a pisser. So who's he taking on that river? You, David, and me. I haven't been here that long. You think I actually need to get my balls back? I'm a little nervous. Don't worry. You'll do fine. He couldn't be happier with David's work. Just relax. Dan! This is Diane Koenig. Hi. I'm Dan Cutler. Hi, it's nice to meet you. We'll get together. Art and I and you and David, great. I'd like that. Thanks, Michelle. Come on in. Can I offer you anything? A cup of coffee, a berry egg? No, I'm fine, thanks. Here, have a seat over there. Is uh, anything wrong, Mr. Cutler? Oh, no. No, no, I should have had Michelle explain. No, I just like to meet with the spouse of anybody new here. I see. You know, so we can get to know one another. It's a big adjustment, you know, new city, new friends. And there are a lot of pressures in this business, too. I know, I know David had to work all through the night a few times on this Adidas thing. You know, it can, you know, it can get to you sometimes. Well, David likes to work hard. 
Oh, David's terrific. We're all crazy about him here. I just want to make sure you're happy, too. I mean, you guys are a team, you know? So how are you coming with the house hunting? Well, we found a place that we like, and we're just about ready to close. Can I help on that? I'm a, you know, a pretty good negotiator. Well, if we have a problem... What about you? What are your plans? I know you were, you were teaching back east. Mm -hmm. Well, I thought that once we got settled, I'd look around. You know what? My wife plays bridge with a couple of people on the school board. I'm gonna have her call you just to get acquainted, okay? Well, thanks. That's very nice. Anything we can do to help, really. I mean, glad you came in. Thanks. Nice to meet you. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Michelle? No, <laughs> she's a tough cookie. Well, if he starts complaining about the hours or the working conditions... Yeah, right, it'll be coming from her. Well, hold it. What? I just spoke to Thornell. He'd love to come on the Chilco trip. Good. Carries is all set, too. We still have that release form from that trip we took a couple of years ago. Oh, I, I need know. a bunch of copies. Legal ones. All right, let me look. Michelle? Oh, she'll be all right. Just keep your eye on her, all right? Right. The trips are led by experienced rapid guides who have seasons of experience. Miller Tours Incorporated. Conditioning and safety are top priority. So we have to decide some no, no, players no, no, no. versus Dan Manning or Cub Scouts, Cub Scouts That's versus Dan Manning. Tiny Cub Scouts. You know, actors that we want. No, they also have to... I want to say bye. Hi. Hi, Diane. Hi, Jack. How'd it go with Dan? Uh, sort of weird, but basically fine. Oh, good. Do you have an hour for me, Angel? Could you pick up a sleeping bag at this place on Ventura? Yeah, uh, sure. Yeah. Hey, uh, you need a place to crash? You know, we just bought a whole house. No, it's for me. But thank you. Dan's taking some of us to Canada next month. Kind of an outdoor get-together with some of our clients. Mm -hmm. You outdoors. No way. It's corporate bonding. Stuff like that. You're gonna catch pneumonia. You'll get lost. I gotta go. It's part of the deal. Snake bite is. Are you going on this trip? Oh, I've been here too long. It seems sane to me. Wouldn't it be nice if the job was just this? Really? Mm. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye, Jack. Love you. He's just tying one last fly. I'll get him. Great. I don't want you to open this until you are wading in a river, all right? It's a surprise. A surprise. <laughs> what is it? A little something for your trip, but you got to promise to use it. What did you get me? I'm not telling you. Socks? Not saying. Extra warm electric socks? Uh-uh. Condoms? Oh, you wish. Electric condoms? I have to tell you, you are getting real cold. Hey. You're not upset because I'm leaving, are you? Oh, please. I've got plenty to do while you're gone. They've got steelhead trout. I've always wanted to go up there. No, really. You carry pictures of fish in your wallet. You think normal men do that? I only carry pictures of you, babe. Oh, yeah? Holding a fish. Hey, Jack. We don't see too much of you anymore. Mm -hmm. I know. We got to do something about that. Let's have dinner when we get back. No, you be sure to put that in your book now. Hmm? That's a promise. Oh, promises, promises. I didn't know you fished. <laughs> well. Just try not to get the hooks caught in your pants, Jack. What do you say, I? Hey. How you doing, Where's Dan? Dan? He's gonna meet us in Vancouver. He and David are taking a different route. David Koning is in my co-replacement. He's a good guy, Nick. That's nice. What's the drill? Chilco Lake by charter, two days R&R, then home. See you in a couple of days, babe. So who's going with us? Well, Dave Koenig and Dan, of course. Uh-huh. Who else? Pete Wiederhorn. Oh, yeah. Big dog at Merrill Lynch, right? Right, right. Jerry Taggart, CG and L, you know him. Yeah, we had a good time at the last trip. Who else? Tom Horton from Wells Ridge. <laughs> a little superior, but not a bad guy. And Andy Thornell. In my assignment, should I accept it? It's to crawl in Andy's sleeping bag at night, right? Exactly. <laughs> you know, I think there's a good chance we're gonna have a great time up here. I hope for nothing. I fear nothing. I am free. How's that? Fellow Greek, writer. That was his philosophy. His epitaph, too. 
Hey. David. Hey. Ben. Say hello to your predecessor. This is Nick Harris. Hi, Nick. I'm David Koenig. I've heard a lot about you. A lot of beautiful things. Hello, it's David. Good to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thanks. Jack, you want to hand out the release forms? I got them. Andy? Release form? Yep. Here. Jerry, take a look. David, what is this? In case we lose our credit cards? <laughs> Pete? Nick? All right. Hey, yeah. Release from what? It's a lawyer thing. Just sign it and we can get out of here. <laughs> no, the legal department asked for it. Don't worry. Look them over. I'll collect them later. Who's not here yet? Spencer, you should be here any minute. Did you say anything about rafting when he invited you? Rafting, yeah. All right. Let's get this stuff done. Whoa, look who's here. Bill Spencer. I don't believe it. An hour out of Cleveland, I realized I haven't packed my gear. Thank God there was a sports store just down the road. Oh, I'm glad you made it. Here's a release. Seven and a half dollars in his budget when the guy leaves home without his fishing tackle. Ashoka Lodge Group? Yeah, it's us. Come on. Are there phones where we're going? It's me. What's the plan, Dan? Are we sleeping out tonight? No, we're staying at the lodge. Tomorrow we have a choice of fishing or floating. On Saturday, everybody floats. We'll go down to Lava Canyon. We'll meet the plane there. We'll come back here. We all float on Saturday? Well, we're all on this rafting trip here. I presume we're all floating. Yeah. Any more questions? Yeah. Could you have the plane stop at 45th Street? Yeah, <laughs> You plan to float the Chilco? That's white water, isn't it? Yeah. Have you got a guide? A guide who knows the river? Yes, I do. Yeah. He's only rafted this river 200 times, so we may have to take a cab part of the way. But uh, yes, it did occur to me to get a guide. Yeah. Thank you. Who's playing this game with me? So, you do it on top of the oven for how long? This is not Oh, just until you get them brown, and then you put them in the oven. Please, Jerry. And then make a white wine reduction. This is the wrong, the wrong guy to ask. The wrong guy to ask about. No, I'm absolutely the right guy. I don't mean wrong in any in a pejorative way. Come on, come on, come on. Wrong guy. Yeah. I mean in a good way. Do you understand? Is there a boat here? Well, we've got a couple we can choose from. Are you ready here? I thought we were going to be going a little sooner. Anybody's in your group? Today, half a dozen. Tomorrow, everybody goes. Ten of us. 
Well, today, if you've got six, I've got a couple of German tourists who want to go down. We can put them all in one boat. No, no, wait, no, wait a second. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You want to mix tourists in with my guys? Why can't the tourists have their own raft? Well, I suppose they could, but no, usually... No, let me explain something to you. Just listen to this. Okay, we're all set. Let's get the guys out of here who are rafting today. What about Karis? He doesn't want to float. He wants to fish today. Okay, and I think you want to fish today, too. Right. Mm -hmm. I want to get going as soon as Miller gets his stuff together. Whenever the hell that's going to be. Trio there will be out of here a couple no, of minutes. No. Forget that stuff. I'll take care of it. Put it away. Put it away. All right, David. Present. Get some of those dead branches over there. Stick them under the wheel. Here we go. I can do. I can do. Okay, oh. look. Uh, Pete. Weed a horn. Joe. See if you can find some sand or gravel or something. Stick it in the mud there. You got it, pal. What else that sand gonna do for that mud? I don't know. It's gonna do a hell of a lot for weed a horn. You get some rocks. Pete. Come on, branches. Let's go. 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 Let's go.
you miss the day-to-day -day stuff? I know you were very close to Thornell. You really think he might pull the account? You think maybe I should talk to him? You know, that would be a great idea. <laughs> Jack, I don't want to embarrass you, but you're positioning me, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know what I've learned going from river to river? Sometimes the fish are where you think they are. And sometimes they're where they're not supposed to be. So you have to sort of develop your own instinct, your own style. Otherwise, you'll always be where the fish are not. I'll give you the book on Thornhill. He's a decent guy. He's honest. And if you try to pressure him, he'll walk. You know, we were meant to live in the wilderness. Our bodies crave fresh air. Tom, stop. Food I'll be crying in a minute. with your own hands. Fear. You taking up the wilderness with that Sleeping cigar. under the sky. I was not meant to live in the wilderness. Face. You know, they did a study that says that sleeping under the sky with a book over your face can actually help your immune system. Put a book up your ass. I'm trying to rest here. Look who's here, the Royal Canadian Navy. How many made it? One, two, three, four, five. That's the idea. Yeah. How was the river? Oh, forget the river. The drive back was a killer. Half my spine is up in my skull. <laughs> there are class five rapids in the river. Class Great. six bumps in the road. Wonderful. They, they really haven't you should have been with it. You should see this girl with an oar. No, no. That way you get me on the water. Tomorrow I fish, today I slept. No, tomorrow you got to come with us. I told them. Oh, yeah, you got it. Yes. Do you know what this class five and class six stuff is and what it means? Because River talk. Yeah. 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 Now, as far as I'm concerned, Nick, you have to go a long way before you beat the classics. Here. Take a look at this. Now, this is a classic. Yeah. If you're talking classic, take a look at this. The Royal Coachman. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's the one you were telling me about. Beautiful. Yeah. This dry fly has caught more trout than any dry fly in the history of fishing. I mean, it looks like it, yeah. <laughs> yeah now, compare this, Jack, to the kind of thing that's going on today. Well, I bet the fish can spot that a mile away. Yes, they can. They can spot it a mile away because it's all tinsel and flash. Fish like that? Las Vegas fish like that. It happens every time I get a party. Nick, you made that? That idea? There's no justice. Who gets justice? People get what they can pay for. Well, that's a pretty broad statement. No, I, I study this in college. They told you in college there's no justice? What college did you go to? Maybe I can help out here. Please. Yeah. This is what we were talking about before. I, I was trying to explain it. I think the justice is relative. Tell him he's having the time of his life. Spencer! Spencer's asleep. No, give him both a shot. David, leave your stuff here. You won't need anything that's not in the boat. Come on, let's go. Come on. 
Dan, what's the deal here? What's the deal? We're going rafting. That's what we came up here for. Because I could happily hang around the lodge and fish all day today. You came all this way Ooh, to hang around the lodge? <laughs> Nick, let's go. Little hustle. Set an example for the younger one. What? That was a joke. Yeah, was it? Wait, <laughs> you a little cranky till you get your oval clean in the morning? Are you needling me? No, I'm not needling you. Yes, you no. are. Why do you do that? Do you enjoy that? Tell you what, let's get in the boat. We can do group therapy on the way home. Now, let's be straight with each other for a minute. Why don't you let up, Dan? I'm not a threat to you. Relax. You know, I always admired how relaxed you were. You had perspective. You had distance. I guess I'd rather stay in the game. You know, if you want to play games, First, find out if anybody wants to play. What is your problem today? Come on. You size up? I'm up for this. Let's go. Okay. Oh, I got it. I got it. It's quite a Viking thing. Come on. Okay, everybody. For those of you who didn't go down the river with us yesterday, this is a Sotar inflatable raft. It's got a couple of very important features, one of which is that it's a paddle boat. Mm -hmm. But you, all of you are the Thank power you. behind the boat. And we'll be needing that power in order to avoid obstacles as we head on down you the river. You mean we're all going to get into that? We won't all fit in there. Yeah. I'll have a paddle, too. I'll be sitting in the back raft, steering and ruddering as we head on down the river. I'll also be yelling different commands. Floor, paddle, right turn, left turn, stop. I'll also be using my paddle. You think one boat's enough? Usually they use two rafts for, for a group this size. Yeah, probably not important. If we had to have two, we would have brought two. Let's just make the best of it. Okay, everybody, go ahead and finish putting on your life jackets, cinch them up tight, and come on down. What do you say about weight distribution? I uh, don't think he's seven. Yeah. Okay, I'll be right back. We're gonna be all over that. Can you uh, can you explain this this class thing to me? Like, what is class three? Class three is uh, what we did yesterday. Right. It's how they rate the rapids on a scale of one to six. Uh, today we'll be hitting some class four and class five. All right. So. So what is class six? Class six is basically unnavigable. I'll be okay. Side goes forward. Okay, left turn. Dig it in. Left turn. Looking good. What are we just copy the person in front of us? Exactly. Okay, right turn. Right turn. Right side back paddle. Will there be cocktails on this flight? Okay, left turn. Left turn. Oh. Right, you got a whole new career here. Yeah, the guy got a hernia. You guys Stop. Uh, <laughs> 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 what? 
Nice. Enter in our first rapid. Let's go, engines.
Hang on! 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 Everybody went in. Oh, I've got to go back up and we float the canyon. Oh, no. You've got to go over to Lexus Creek. Get some help back. The van's been over I'll get a ride with them. Call our rescue.
river is a road. What road? No, I said there was a road south side of the river. This is... This is the north side. Keep moving. Hello? Hello? Over here! Hey! hey! Over here! Who is it? Here I am! Pete! Pete! Go! Oh. <laughs> hey! hey. hey. Yeah. It's good to see you. Good to see you. Uh, right. You okay? Yeah, you, you all right? right? Oh, God. Are you okay? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Oh, 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 I, I got out about an eighth of a mile back down that we way. We saw Nick and Arden. They were in the water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Maybe he has a bad heart. 
a bad heart? Well, what was it? What happened? Those rapids had me for almost an hour. I'm 55. You're telling me a younger man wouldn't have made it if he was healthy? God, everybody knows how to swim. Choco's not a swimming hole. Just row the fucking boat. Looks like you've got some broken ribs. Uh, your lungs sound clear. They don't seem to be punctured. Great. Pete, Andy, I got your bags. Why don't you guys go on ahead? They're here. They're okay. Just, did you see ours? Or David? Dan? Did you see Nick? Dan, what about the others? Did you see anybody? Sir, I need you to stand back and just give us some room, all right? Just relax a bit. We'll get you to the hospital at Williams. Hey, I had carries in my hands. Look at his face, you know? I see his eyes. <laughs> then they just lost him. River just took him away. Goddamn rock. Fucking rock. Shit. Inspector Costello, I'm sorry, but we need for you to identify the bodies of these five gentlemen. Okay. Did you and your friends have any rafting experience? Some of us did. That's David Koenig. Did anyone instruct you in how to handle yourselves in the rapids on this trip? Um, not much. It was Horton. Tom Horton. But there was some instruction. Well, the Chilco's a pretty powerful river. Right. It's, it's Art Stefanoff. Bill Spencer. Eleven men. That's a lot to have in one raft. Mm. Nick 
take carrots. Is your knee hurting, Dan? No, it's fine. How are you? You ought to ask him to give you a pill. You want me to make the calls to the families? No, I'll call them. You go back home. Make sure people don't fall apart. You know, there's a lesson here. I didn't motivate them enough. If I just built a fire under them, we wouldn't be here now. I let myself down, you know? You were great out there, Jack. You ought to be proud of yourself. Why? Yeah, yeah that's great. We could really test ourselves, negotiating our way through the lobby. I can't wait to see those faces. you'd be on a cane. Were you badly hurt? No. A couple of weeks, I'll be fine. Anything I should know? Uh, Marty wants to see you when you have time for him. No, tell him to come in. And Diane Koenig is in the building to pick up a check. She asked if she could see you on her way out. Thought you'd want to see her. Yeah, it'll be okay. Set up lunch for you at your desk. You got me that cheesecake. Welcome home. Thanks. Marty? He can see you now. I thought I'd wait until you got back to work before I hit you with it. I have to tell you, Marty, I find this hard to believe. Who filed the suit? The company is being sued by Jenna Karras. Now, you're not a defendant, but they are holding the corporation responsible for your actions. And Ed Miller's. Jenna Karras. She has no case. Nick signed that release. Everybody did. Well, there are problems with the release. The wording was pretty vague. They should have been issued before the trip. It's probably invalid. That's great. I saw Nick's face this close to me, seconds before he drowned. I still see his eyes. I'm gonna give him my life to save him. Dan, I know you know this, but you can't let this get to you personally. Look, I understand her bitterness. I understand that. Letting somebody destroy me is not gonna bring him back. Well. I just thought I'd let you know it was happening. Yeah, good, thanks. Diane, please, come in. I'm very sorry. Please, have a seat. Just finishing up some lunch. And Alma got me a piece of the best cheesecake in the city. Want to have a little with me? No, thank you. It's pretty good. 
I haven't been able to eat very much lately. Diane, what you should know about David's death was that it was very sudden. We didn't see that rock until the last second. Then we were caught up in this amazing swirl of water. Oh, thanks. I guess it helps to know that. They have a check for you? Yeah. Five thousand, fifty-five dollars, seventy-two cents. Well, that ought to help a little. Yeah. I'm really grateful for that 72 cents. Diana, I'm sure no one could miss David as much as his wife can. That's right. stuff you did on the bank. You got it. Yeah, you like it. I made one or two little changes, but you got it. Jesus, that's fine work. Thank you. You got right back on the horse, didn't you? Everybody else around here is in a coma. You've really risen to this. You took over on the river when I was in too much shock to even know what I was doing. realize how much I rely on you. I don't rely on many people, you know. Are you comfortable in here? Get all that afternoon sun. Talk to Marty. You might as well take the corner office on the north side. Oh, I couldn't take David's office, Dan. No, take it. We gotta move on, kid. I need you to. How is it? You like it? Thank you. Let well, some light in. It's dismal in here. It is hard, isn't it? Yeah. For everybody. Jenna must be going through hell. Yeah. She must be out of her head. Wouldn't have brought that suit if she was thinking clearly. Maybe you would have talked to her. Well, what would I say? Help her understand it isn't in her best interest. I don't, I don't have to tell you what to say. I really feel uncomfortable talking to her about the suit. The suit? No. 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 She's going through a very difficult time. Be supportive. I'm sorry, I can't do that. You can't do that? Maybe it is in her best interests. Well, whatever you think is right. You know, I'm asking you to help her not do something that would waste her money with no chance of bringing him back. 
I'm not asking you to do anything disloyal to anybody. I'm asking you to be loyal. Is there any reason you can't do that? Jenna, I'm so sorry. Thank you for your letter. It was really thoughtful. Would you like to come in? Oh, I don't want to disturb you. I, I just, uh... Let's walk. Sure. You know, I admired him tremendously. A wise person. Such a core of decency. He was very funny. <laughs> he used to do these imitations of me that really made me laugh. And I couldn't get mad at him. It's funny what you miss. Here we were a few weeks ago, piling into that car. And now... Jack, I have to ask you something. Don't suffer at me, OK? I can't carry your pain, too. I'm sorry. You're going to have to forgive yourself. You're right. You know, people have been coming to see me. Well, they have these really warm words about Nick and condolences for me. And then there'll be this little pause. And they tell me I have to put Nick's death behind me. And that I don't really have a chance. Is this one of those pauses? No, I won't tell you that. You've been through enough. Well, yeah, I have. The pause was about something else. Suppose I testified. Your lawyers took my deposition. Maybe they'd like me to take the stand. No, I don't think so. Why not? Because I think you really want me to say no, don't you? God, this is the best yet. An actual offer of help. Sounded real good there, Jack. I'll tell you what. You got a pen? This is my lawyer's number. If you actually feel this way tomorrow, give him a call. Things don't happen in a vacuum, Jack. As soon as you contacted them, they contacted us. They're obligated to. So far, all I did was call them, Marty. Look, you realize that if we lose this suit, Dan will almost surely have to step down? Maybe leave the company? You understand that? Marty, I'm just trying to figure out what's the right thing to do. Look, the fact is, they don't even need you. They have an expert witness. 
Leslie Wayne Bechtel. And the guy wrote a book about river rafting. What can you possibly add to what he's going to say? You still have time to reconsider, Jack. We should think about it. I feel like I've got a few things I need to square with you, Jack. Sure. First of all, I'm very aware that when you pulled me into that boat, I had about another three minutes uh, left on Earth. Andy would have done the same thing for me. Secondly, I'm sure it's no surprise we're moving our account. No, it's no surprise at all. I'm glad you told me personally. OK, now I have to ask you something. This has been bugging me for a couple of weeks. How ashamed is anybody over there about what happened? Everybody's taking it pretty hard. You think taking it hard is good enough? Look, I know why we went on that trip together. You weren't positioning the client? Sure we were. That wasn't the only thing the trip was about. No? Did your company write any of it off as a business-related expense? Dan handled that. Well, maybe you should talk to the accountants. And maybe you can tell me that taking it pretty hard is good enough. Candy, we've been rocked by this. I'm thinking of testifying for Jenna. You're thinking about it? I, I don't know if I have anything worth getting up there and saying. I don't have any hard evidence that could clinch it for her. There's no point in an empty gesture. There's something you could say that could possibly help her. Then, God damn it, say it. These cases aren't decided by some crucial piece of evidence. You don't have to go in with a smoking gun, all right? All you have to do is have the nerve to stand up when your turn comes and tell the goddamn truth the way you know it. Andy, what, why are you beating me up about this? Because I'm helpless. Because when I saw Tom Horton's body floating by me, his head looked like something inanimate, like a melon. He was already half dead, and not 30 seconds before, he was joking about how wet his socks were. Now, listen to me. Peggy Horton can't explain this to their two-year-old because he can't talk. He doesn't know where his father went. He's never going to know where he went. So if you have anything you can do, anything, then do it. Do it. Mr. Bechtel, do you have any opinions concerning the conduct of Burroughs McCain, the defendant in this case? Yes, I do. And what are your opinions, sir? Well, the first thing is that they should not have invited Mr. Karras along in the first place. He had no experience. In fact, he didn't even think he was coming along on a whitewater trip. He thought it was going to be a fishing trip. You do not take a novice on the Lava Canyon. Well, when he asked me about this and told me that he'd always wanted to fish there, my comment was, so go. Had there ever been any mention by Nick of that trip involving anything other than fishing? No. Did the words whitewater rafting ever come up? No. He certainly wanted to go on that trip. And he knew it was whitewater rafting. What else is it about Burroughs McCain's conduct that you believe was wrong in this case? Well, it became apparent to me after reading the literature provided to me that Mr. Cutler put a lot of pressure on Mr. Miller to make this an exclusive trip. He didn't want any strangers on this trip, which made Mr. Miller run a single raft trip. Well, now, shouldn't Miller have insisted that he go in two rafts? Yes, he should have. In my classes, I talk about the need to be forceful and to sometimes say no, even though it might displease some people. If you're going to compromise safety, there's a time that you have to say no. Now, ladies and gentlemen, 
The next witness will be presented to you by way of a videotaped deposition. For reasons of geography, the witness is unable to be here, but I instruct you that you should consider the videotaped deposition in the same manner that you would consider any other testimony by a live witness. Well, that, that morning, Ed said, why don't you, you better just go on down ahead. And we didn't discuss it then, but, you know, later on in later discussions with Ed, we talked about the idea of the single boats, and, you know, he kind of said that he felt a little pressure to keep it an exclusive trip. order is given to Ed Miller. Ed Miller and I had an agreement. And in order for us to put our compatible group together, there would be roughly 10 of us. And we wouldn't be mixed in with a, another group of strangers. You're right. I did not put pressure on him. Mr. Wiederhorn. Did you shortly after the accident make some notes to yourself on that trip? I'm going to show you plaintiff's exhibit number 113. Would you, uh, would you read that, sir? What does it say? No safety instructions. Thank you, Mr. Wiederhorn. He gave us the instructions when we were gathered there, as he was checking the vests and before we pushed off. The first time was well, before we put in, when he was getting everybody into the rafts. We were going out. And how long did that take? I would guess no more than a couple of minutes. The longer one occurred above Bidwell? Yeah. He told you. If you go in the water, get your feet in front of you. Is that right? He said, when I say go to the high side, go to the high side fast. That's going to help prevent the boat from flipping over. <laughs> Thank you. The court stands in recess for one hour. All right, let's bearing up on you, sir. Oh, okay. How you doing? Kind of enjoying it. Come on. Well, might as well. Another adventure, you know? Let me see. Today's the day, huh? You ready to testify? I know you know when someone's in a position like this where anything you might say could hurt a friend. The only thing you can do is tell the truth. Hey, come on, of course. I guess I'm wondering how you'll color it. Color it? Color it. What, what'll it sound like? What flavor is it going to have? Truth doesn't have flavors. I'm just going to go in there and tell them what I saw and what I you heard. You can say the same thing in a lot of different ways, Jack. You know that as well as I do. We, we do that for a living. Well, this isn't a product we're selling. It's the truth. Yeah? You self-righteous little prick. I fought for my life in that water, just like everybody else. You're telling me I abused these people? I suffered as much as anybody who made it. And I can't call back the ones who didn't. I'm not God, Jack, are you? 
fuck were you doing, Dan? What does that mean? Taking everyone up there and organizing it so everyone ended up in one boat. I was making better people out of it. Until we hit that rock, I gave them the greatest experience of their lives. I gave them their deepest selves. They found a bond that only comes to men who have bullets whistling over their heads. They could live with their wives for 50 years and never get that close. Well, I guess that's the spin you put. Yeah, that's right. That's the spin I put. Right. Well, I think it's wrong. Maybe it's okay to color things and flavor them if you're selling cornflakes, but with people's lives, I think they're entitled to decide for themselves how much risk they'll be exposed to. I don't think it makes you a good leader to keep your people in the dark and drive them past their limits. I think it makes you a bully. Well, see, I made you a better man, too. Oh, wait, hold a sec. What? 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 You want me to say I was a bad boy? I made a mistake? What? If you have anything to say that I ought to hear, then tell me. I'm not going to plead my case to you. Go in there and tell them what you saw. We hit a rock, Jack. We hit a rock. Now, let, let's talk about them for a minute. They were what? What, children? Six-year-olds who wouldn't cross the street without my permission? No, listen to me. Listen to me, God damn it. I know how rough that sounds, but this is the fucking truth. They weren't just grown men. They were executive officers of some of the biggest companies in this country. And they blindly did what I told them to do, and I killed them? That sort of crap, Jack. They had every opportunity to get out of that boat. You know they did. I'm sick that those men are dead. I'll live with that for the rest of my life. But what about their part of this? What about their personal responsibility? What about yours? That's a good question. What about my responsibility? As I understand the objection, Ms. Chung, Mr. Leslie Wayne Bechtel was not entitled to the right of expression of an opinion relative to his belief, re the professional conduct of Burroughs McCain as a professional passion. I couldn't hear everything they were saying. I didn't want to get too close and seem to be eavesdropping, but what I saw and what I heard was this. Miller had another group that he was planning to put with us. And Dan had said that he worked hard to put together a people for this trip that, that could enjoy one another and relax. And he said, Ed, what's going on? What's going on? It's difficult enough when you have a group, some of whom are coming together for the first time without having strangers. We don't know in our boat room. Is that clear? Do you understand what I'm saying? Miller understood what he wanted. When we got to the first minor set of rapids, yes, sir, I was aware that the boat was acting differently. Because when it would go into a, a, a trough, it would take longer to come up. And it didn't seem to have the same snap action that you were accustomed to seeing in a raft? Yes, sir. Is that because after you'd had time to think about it, you finally realized that it was because there was much more weight in this raft? 
I didn't have to realize it. Miller addressed the group that had gone rafting the day before, and he said, if you'll notice, the raft is somewhat slower because there's more weight in it. Thank you, Mr. Robbins. Have you arrived at your verdict? We have, Your Honor. Please head to the bill. We, the jury, find for the plaintiffs and against the defendant, yes. Yes. and further find the following. Mm -hmm. The total amount awarded the Karras family was $2 million. No, no, listen, 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 listen. We don't pay the whole thing. It, some of the negligence in the accident, 45% of it was attributed to the men themselves, so the award was brought down to a million one. Yeah. Right, that's right. 45% them, 55% us. Turns out the other guys were 45% responsible. I guess the truth isn't all that simple, is it? Oh, so that makes it all right. You, you still don't get it, do you? What exactly is there to get? I mean, besides the fact that you caused a lot of wreckage in there. I don't consider a few dollars for Nick Karras's widow wreckage. I think our company can afford it. Our company? You think either one of us is going to stay very long at that company after that testimony you gave in there? I guess I thought a few other things were more important. Like what? Why did you do this? You could have got up and said what you had to say. You had to go that extra inch, didn't you? You gave it that St. Bernard sincerity, and you just... just tipped it against us. Why did you do that? I don't know. I had this thought that maybe I should help someone who wasn't me. Wild, isn't it? I'll see you, pal. 